1010 Nelson, your community access television. Programming on this channel is made by local volunteers. If you would like to be a part of your community television, please call 354-4200 or write to Shaw Cable, 613 Ward Street, Nelson, B1L1T2. Hello and welcome to Shaw Cable's presentation of Siswagen Fun 89, Nelson's 7th Annual Triathlon, held Sunday, August 13th. The event consists of a 1 kilometer swim, a 44 kilometer cycle, and a 10 kilometer run, beginning and ending at Nelson's beautiful Lakeside Park. I'm Stuart Layfield, and this is and I'm Irish Schwartz. There we are, getting ready for the start of the swim. The lake temperature is about 68 degrees, I believe, this year. Please leave the transition area. Thank you. That's the guy behind 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 you. That's the guy and cycle 24 kilometers and run 5K. Here we see some of the swimmers just getting used to the water. I suppose notwithstanding the water temperature being what it is, it still seems a little chillier at 5 to 8 in the morning. I'm, or so they tell me. Yeah, so they tell me. There we see one of our local triathletes, Con Diamond. Con has been a sponsor to his business, the Main Street Diner of the Triathlon, for the last three years. And this year, he's decided to participate in the event himself. Last year, when I was sitting here having my breakfast and watching the the, the people ride by on their bikes, I just didn't think that I'd ever be in, in a triathlon. It wasn't really interesting to, even, to do that. So what made you do it this year then? Well, I've just been uh, getting more and more into exercising. And then I thought I'd, I'd swim and uh, ride, and then I thought, well, if you're going to swim and ride, might as well run too, because done most of the work by then. Yeah, at first you, at first I started uh, exercising to be in shape, but then kind of, it's kind of addictive and you, you, you enjoy how it makes you feel too. So if you don't do your exercise, you, something's missing. It's not something you have to force yourself to do. If you do it every day, you know, if you, if I do either I ride or I swim or something every day, and if you don't do it, you really miss it. And so Sunday morning I would have done some exercise anyway. Might as well uh, go around, <laughs> see if we can make it all the way around. I'd either go for a swim for 45 minutes, maybe sometimes do two things, one in the morning. And, and, but it's nice for me working the bit. I, I work, go to work at noon hour, 11 o'clock. And so to use the exercises, split my day up, like to go out in the afternoon. That kind of do it on company time too. You know. Do all that. I mean, if you really want to feel good about doing it and, then, and not kill yourself, you, you have to do a little bit of regular exercise all the time. And then when it comes to trap on time, you just tune up a little bit and I'm sure you'll be fine. Maybe we'll see whether, <laughs> whether I'm right after, <laughs> after it's over. You know, if, if they have to pick me up halfway through the run, then I guess I was wrong, you know. You know so. That's why I'm involved, and that's why I got into, that's why I signed my name. <laughs> well, I guess uh, we'll see you tomorrow and see how you're doing. <laughs> Is it tomorrow already? Tomorrow. Oh my god, I better get out there. Y'all said it. Take your mark! Get set! Go! Well, they're off, Ira. 
just your basic Sunday morning exercise. That's the big fun part of the track run, I think. You'll be in a little bit of shape in all three sports and come out and have a good Okay, which one? The first one. Right here, she's got a pink. And here we see the adults starting to come in. Of course, we cover quite a wide distance from very excellent swimmers out front to a number of people towards the end who are just basically doing it for the exercise or for the fun of it. Our first swimmer out of the water is Mike Taylor from Sparwood, who of course was the eventual winner of the event. And here we see Ann Downey, coach of the local Nelson Neptune swim team, and the second swimmer out of the water and the first woman out of the water. And here's Melissa Pitsinas. Two, four, six. that many of these traffics have straps at the back of their wetsuits that enable them to beginning, begin coming out of them as soon as they're out of the water so that by the time they hit the bike racks they're already basically half out of their wetsuits. There's somebody who wishes he had a wetsuit. That's right. Go, 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 and he's probably wishing he decided to invest in a wetsuit at this time. He looks a little tired. <laughs> Donnie Walker, good swimmer. You can see the tremendous difference in the abilities of some of the swimmers. Seven or eight or so have been out of the water by now, but there are still others who are still over on the other side of the lake, just starting to come back across. So the swimmers are going to head through transition and hop on their bike and head out onto the bike course. Yes, they run up off the beach and up the stairs that lead into the park itself. Run along the grass inside the park for oh, 50 or 75 yards to the bike racks where they get out of their wetsuits and into their running shoes and or their cycling shoes, I guess that should be, and their helmets, and head out the far end of the park, right out through the parking lot and up onto Nelson Avenue, and out on the cycling course. Many of these cyclists, of course, will be well on their way to the first turnaround point in the cycle, which is out at Tagum before some of these ladder swimmers are out of the water. All right, it's you! Go, 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 go! Mary. Mary Aslan. Lots of spectators encouraging the participants on, Ira. We had a great crowd out this year. It was really, really good feeling to see all those people down on the beach and out on the course. Well, there's no question that the more spectators, the better the event. What would the beach be without a dog, yeah? <laughs> Even in a triathlon. And a well-mannered one at that. <laughs> Alan Shiverell, in from Vancouver. Okay, come on! 
And here's Khan. Finished, finished the first third of his Sunday morning exercise. Just how essential is the wetsuit, do you think, for this hour? Well, there's a lot of controversies going into that because they do add speed by adding flotation and a lot less friction in the water. At the same time, they keep you a lot warmer and help you conserve your strength for the rest of the event. So why would someone not want to wear a wetsuit then? Well, the people who are just taking part in the event on a fun basis don't have to go out there and spend the money. But the people Apart from are, the financial considerations, though, does a wetsuit make it harder to swim? No, they're designing them now that... Doesn't encumber the swimming stroke at no. all? Here you see some of the swimmers as they've come up the steps off the beach and are running through the grassy portion of the transition area onto the bike racks. Highly competitive triathletes, of course, have the art of transition down to the point where they can come in off the swim and be out on the run in just a matter of seconds with their cycling shoes affixed to the pedals of their bike. The theory being, of course, that time spent in transition is time wasted. The transition times for most of the entrants tend to be two or three minutes. But the more competitive ones are in and out in a hurry, don't you think? They're off the swim in about a minute and a half from the beach to the beginning of the cycle. The teams, of course, just have to... We're looking here at Penelope Moody, who came over from Christina Lake to do the triathlon. I believe this was her first triathlon. And talking with her after the event was over, she said she had an absolutely splendid time and was going to be sure to be back here next year. Her 15-year-old daughter, Melanie, is also taking part in the triathlon. Penelope ended up first in her class, Andy. women's division, 40 years and over. Here we see some of what we can only call some of the more deliberate transitions. And these are the cyclists just coming out of Lakeside Park and riding up the approach to Nelson Avenue. That cyclist there, for instance, just affixing his helmet, not bothering to take the time to do it in transition. Bit of a climb coming out of the park. Good time to get warmed up and get those cycle legs spinning. Yes, it must be quite a feeling to be going from, in a matter of seconds or only a minute or two, from using your swimming muscles to using what I imagine are an entirely different set of muscles for cycling. The transition from laying down to sitting on the bike to a whole different world.
How many entrants did we have this year? I don't know the exact number right offhand, but I believe just right around 170. 170 plus or minus two or three. steep hill coming out of Nelson towards Salmo and before the cyclists head off west towards Tagum. Quite a grunt for some of the cyclists I would imagine. What sort of wheel was that on the back of that bike, Ira? It was a solid disc wheel. I don't know if they make you go faster by making more noise or... The theory is they, they do make the bike go faster, do they? It's the, all the aerodynamics, is what they say. And you'll see these leading participants are also using the special kind of handlebars that have evolved directly out of triathloning. I, gather the idea is that by having the cyclists be, be able to lay their arms down on those extended bars they're able to assume a more aerodynamic position and therefore cycle faster than they would if they were in the normal cycling position. You'll notice that pretty well all of these leading triathletes, the more serious ones, do have some sort of bar extension. hard to recognize some of these people with their heads down and sunglasses on their eyes and moving at the speed they're moving. Cyclists here, of course, have already gone out to tag them and made the turnaround and are now cycling back through Nelson, preparatory to heading out over the Orange Bridge and on to the second portion of the triathlon cycling course, which is out to the lower six mile road and back. Fifty-two. I don't believe it is actually. I don't think Mike has a mustache. Brad Smith from Calgary, Alberta. We had a number of triathletes from Calgary this year actually. I think a group of them came out from a triathlon club there, Centurion Cycle Triathlon Club. They all seem to enjoy themselves immensely and are sure to say be back next year too. There's another disc wheel. I don't believe that's actually a triathlete. I think that's just a cyclist taking <laughs> out for a Sunday ride. No, no, that's one of our really? triathletes. Really? <laughs> Larry Bickerton. Larry Bickerton is one of only two people who've taken part in all seven Size walking fun triathlons. Just commenting that he was riding by his house there. These guys are hammering. Sharon Best. Sharon, of course, has won all five of the previous six Seiswagen funds that she's entered in. Went on to finish third this 
sphere. And the Penticton Iron Man. The only size walk and fun triathlon that Sharon hasn't won is last year's when she didn't enter because she was back east. Lean, mean, lean and mean. That's for sure. Number 90, that's Mike Taylor. Finished first in his men's division from Sparwood, BC. I think could be called one of the BC's up and coming triathletes. There must have been the RCMP leading Mike through as the leading participant, Just letting all the people ahead know that the cyclists are on their way. Great support from both the RCMP and Nelson City Police. Yes, a number of the participants mentioned after the race that they really appreciated the support that the both police forces gave in directing traffic and making them feel assured that they were safe on the race course. I tell you, Stuart, this is great. Because in all the years of putting on this race, I never get to go out on the course at all to see what's going on out there. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> this is my one chance. I spent the whole event in the transition area at the park and didn't have a chance to see any of this cycling. I think next year I'll be a drafting marshal. Next year, I you should be doing it, and so should I. And here are some of the leading cyclists on the way back in from the lower six mile road and enjoying that fast downhill swoop past the NW and the Johnson Road turn off and onto the bridge. It's a good feeling to be coming downhill, Ira, here. And here's Mike Walker out on the run, quite far ahead of the Next runner, making the turn off off Highway 3A and onto Johnson Road, beginning the fairly steep climb. Followed by Kevin Mack from Calgary, Alberta, another one of the Centurion Cycling Club runners. Kevin eventually came second in the event and it is running in second place there. Of course, just as some of the leading swimmers were out on their cycle while some of the swimmers were still coming out of the water, we see some of the runners out doing the third the leg classes? of the event while more cyclists are still coming in. Yes, that's Gerald Clausen, last year's winner, running in third place. Fourth place there is John Hammermeister from San Diego, California and during the winters and Vashon, Washington in the summers. I don't know who that was running with him. Obviously a team participant finished her portion of the race and a spectator from here on. Good place to watch the race on the bridge. This is looking from the turnaround at the 7-Eleven. Jennifer Best once again out on her five kilometer run as a youth class 
participant, Ian Dudley from Castlegar, stopping for a bit of a breather on his run. Helen McClure. It's much easier to identify these Sheila Ryan, these participants without any bicycling helmet and sunglasses on. She looks like she's got a bit of a stitch here. Oh, there's the young king boy. Jordan King. And that, of course, was Brock Ryan, team member. Walker, still leading, stopping. I guess he must be cramping up slightly there. I, I would be too, setting a torrid pace like that. Kevin Mack, Gerald Classen. I still see some of the carnage left on the road from that storm from right. the night before. John Hammermeister, presently in fourth place, but pushing Gerald Classen for third. John did really well at Penticton Ironman as well. Here is the fourth place runner, Mark Risley, also from Sparwood. And here's Mike Schoeniger from what turned out to be the first place men's team. And Kim Clark running on what turned out to be the leading mixed team. Sharon Best again, running hard, passing men, actually always seems to be doing in these events, streaking by one participant after another. She's really a good runner, Sharon. Dr. Bickerton again. Larry the Hammer. I believe that's Carlos Pasqua from Cranbrook, who also did Penticton Ironman. I believe that's Patty Nash from Kimberley. Bryce Haymiller from Edmonton, Alberta. Les Jones from Caslo. I believe Les was our rookie of the of the year this year. Fastest time for a first time triathlete. Tree Anderson. our second woman finisher, and who went on to complete her first Penticton Ironman. Laura Adams, Adele Lansing from Penticton, good friend of Tree Anderson's through the women's triathlon and biathlon circuits. Charlie Schramma down for, from Fort McMurray, comes every year to the triathlon, one of our regulars.
And number 88. Jim Flanagan from Moy Springs, Idaho. Number 83, John Snively, local dentist and perennial participant. all various team runners. Joy McAdams. Elaine McClemmon. And while some of the runners are finishing up, some of the slower cyclists are still coming in. Again, we see Kevin Mack coming off the bridge. John Hammermeister, again, running hard. Pursuing Gerald Klassen. I believe, actually, John caught Gerald right at the, almost right at the finish line to steal third place. Risley, fourth place finisher from Sparwood. Mike Schoenecker, finishing up the run for the leading team, mixed team of Mary Jean Trainer and Mike Adams. Running up here, I'd say that looks an awful lot to me like Mark Hornby. I think you're right. It does a very distinctive that. running style with his elbows out wide. Mark is one of our major, major sponsors for Athlete World. And of course, a two time Penticton Ironman. I think Mark's running style is really geared to running those longer 26 mile distances than. Yeah, he finds these 10K runs that form parts of these triathlons to be a piece of cake. And a couple of our many, many volunteers directing traffic at Johnson Road. And Sharon Best heading up onto Johnson Road. Mark's younger brother, Dave Hornby. Also a two-time Penticton Ironman. And one of the good young triathletes.
Larry down and up the hill. It's known as a hilly course, hilly run, scenic cycle, majestic swing. Again, I say, Ira, by the time those cyclists begin to hit that downhill portion just before the bridge, they must be feeling pretty good knowing that they've only got another kilometer or so to go and it's all downhill. Yeah, but Stuart, then they got to get off their bikes and get to the 10K run. And speaking of 10K runs, here is Khan. Two thirds of the way through the event and on the last leg of his Sunday morning exercise. Khan will be the first person to tell you that he does not like running. Doug Davies, number 94 there, another Nelson athlete, doing his first triathlon. Have a sponge. Al Oranger. Al Oranger taking part in a men's team this year after having done the whole triathlon himself last year. Jan Lindsay helped out. Number 244 there, swim. Jan Lindsay taking part in as a member of a team with her husband, Bob, go, Jan. and her 13-year-old daughter, Shona Lindsay. Shona did the swim and Bob the cycle, and Jan finishing things off as the runner. It's one of the good things about the team portion of the event, Ira, is that families can actually take part and do the whole event together. Number 243, Larry Plotnikoff, Part of a mixed team with Tammy Morello swimming and Robin French Greenslade cycling. Here again we have Tree Anderson. Just a warm up for the Iron Man. Just a warm up. Here's somebody doing what I'd be doing, Ira. <laughs> Taking a bit of a break. And already coming down, Mike Walker. Mike Taylor. Mike Taylor, I think. I think I've probably referred to him a couple of times here as Mike Walker, but Mike Taylor it is. And here are Adele Lansing from Penticton and Anna Ockenden from Summerland, BC running neck and neck. And again, I believe that's one of the Centurion cycle runners from Calgary. Number 66. And Clark. Carl and Dostin. Derek Peregrine. At least you got me with a good view. Oh, and here's Khan heading oh, back over the there? bridge. Getting there, getting there. Gonna make it? Yes, Khan, the end's in sight now. Oh, 
not only are they running, but they're so polite, Stuart. Yes. Mark Hornby coming off the bridge, finishing up. Yves Cote, also from Nelson. Again. Another one of the satellite cycles. Okay. There's a hot finish at the end. see some of the cyclists coming in on 2nd Street there as runners are going out, just outside the park. Larry Bickerton finishing his seventh triathlon here in Nelson. Part of our excellent timing crew, right at the entrance to the park where the finishing times are taken. More of our timing crew. Corey Shields just finishing up. Should be shooting some finishes here. I think many participants will tell you this is probably the highlight of the event finishing. days in August. It was amazing, Ira, considering the tremendous storm we had the night before, that the weather cleared up so fabulously for the event itself. Couldn't have asked for better weather. Well, I've already put in the order for August 12th of next year. More sun, clear skies. From I recognize him from his distinctive garb. Anna Ockenden from Summerland. Go for a Sunday stroll. Mary Plotnikoff from Nelson. Dell's all smiles now that it's over. Hi, how are you doing? George Matheson, part of the men's team. Real fine fellow. Taking part in his first ice logging fun. And Jim Flanagan from Moy Springs, Idaho. He and his wife and their daughter all taking part this year, each as individuals. His wife, Nan Flanagan, and their 13-year-old daughter, Colleen. 
and the participants taking advantage of the fine massage therapy treatments after provided by Robert Weiler and his many assistants. Said that some people would probably tell you that finishing is the best part of the triathlon, but I'm sure there's others that tell you that the massage is the best part of the triathlon. I, well, I think those honey odies are the best part. Johnny's so Bakery's honey odies. We have to mention the tremendous support we get here on race day from Overweighty with all the food they supply, and Johnny's Bakery with their honey odies, and Dairyland providing yogurt and drinks for all the participants and volunteers on race day. Joey McAdams finishing up. <laughs> Tony Musa taking part in his first triathlon as the runner in the team comprised of his brother and his sister-in-law who came in from Edmonton to form a team with him. Talked to Tony after and he said they all had a really good time. Alan Shiverell from Vancouver. And Laura Adams from Nelson. Finishing her first triathlon as an individual. And here's Margot Dean and her mountain bike. Margot still has to head out on the run here. Ira, what could be a more beautiful setting for the transition area than Lakeside Park. It's perfect, all right. One thing I like about triathlons is the incredible good feeling that seems to exist between all the people who take part when it's over. It's really a fun event, triathloning. I suppose at the world-class level it's intensely competitive, but in events like ours it's participation that's most important from the first to the last finisher. Everybody seems to be just out for a good time. Darren Shields rode a cycle on a team this year. Prominent Nelson skier. Peter Lamb taking advantage of massage he ran on a team. If I'm not mistaken, there's Khan again, having successfully completed his first triathlon. Patiently waiting for his turn at the massage tables. And there's Robert Weiler himself. Robert and his crew do a great job, don't you think? Just for prevention? I saw you just a boogie and along the road and I thought it was good. Well, that's good. That made you work a little harder. Well, that's good. No, I competed with the team. Uh, Peter Lamb was my runner and Sasha Kaboa was my swimmer and I cycled. Um, for the training I've been doing for this was a lot of uh, distance riding. And uh, I remember to do the triathlon uh, next year just to take advantage uh, of this cycle that massage. was here. I think so. Great. Uh, Organizers should be able to get a massage, don't you think?
there's some good and bad things about it. One of the bad things about it is going uphill it tends to slow you down a bit. A long gradual hill. And uh, but as far as the difference, they say it's supposed to make uh, 10 seconds for every kilometer. Save you 10 seconds. I didn't really notice that myself today, but <laughs> that's what they say. It's probably the guys who make it. See that. We did it! All right, you did it. Volunteer did it. Still got to clean up, so I haven't quite done it yet. I'd like to thank again the major sponsors: Bradley Will, Mark Hornby. I don't know if I can give you that gold medal today, Mark, but Overweighty Foods. They supplied all that delicious food. That you had after the race. Main Street Diner to support all those volunteers that were out there today with uh, gift certificates to the restaurant. So if any of you volunteers are still here, thank you very much. Great job. I'd like to thank uh, Paul Amro who's down at his dark room right now, processing all the film that we shot today. All the Nelson Daily News who give us support and do a lot of printing for us before the race. And the Cooney Broadcasting System for the sound system and for the coverage and for the PR all through the Cooney's. So thank you to all our major sponsors. Individual boys, 15 and under. In third place, time of 123.40, from Sherwood Park, Alberta, Matt Verdini. Another part of the triathlon I like are when at the end when they're giving out the awards and everybody's wearing their triathlon t-shirts. I like that. Turned out to be a nice shirt this year. Yeah, it seems pretty popular. Beating Scott out by 13 seconds from Fruitvale, BC, Kevin Dunabak. That's Kevin Dunabak, who's hot. And as a youth, it's only 14 kids will be back again next year. In third place, by the 2 3 5 40. Congratulations. Individual men division 16 to 19. In third place, time of 235.40. From Fruitvale, BC, 16 year old Kari Howell. In second place, the time of 19 year old Kevin Hill. Don't you just hate being at the bottom of your age group? In second place, with a time of 227.23 from Cranbrook, BC, 19 year old Kevin Hill. First place, the 
Final 214.39. He was really good too. He finished 13 Carlin minutes ahead of his Wilson. second place finisher, Kevin Hill, in the 16 to 19 men's category. He'll be competitive in the 20 to 29 category next year. Congratulations. Individual women, 20 to 29. In third place, time of 245.22 from Nelson, BC, Elizabeth Hurst. This is Elizabeth's first triathlon. Congratulations. In second place, we call the 240, not nine. First triathlon again from Nelson, BC, Laura Adams. First doing a first triathlon for the time of 2.30.35 from Penticton, B.C., Adele Marie Lansing. <laughs> Adele's gone back on the Penticton. <laughs> Third place for the time of 2, 6.27. From Trail BC, Gerald Foster. <laughs> Seventeen seconds ahead, second place. Time at 206.10 for Vashel Watch, Washington, John Hammermeister. Welcome John back for the second time around. He's spreading the word for us. <laughs> Out in front, first place, almost a minute ahead, 205.51 from Calgary, Alberta, 29-year-old Kevin Mack. this year. It's going to be more and more competitive every year. In third place, with a time of 230-31, from Summerland, B.C., Anna Ockenden. Ockenden. Second place, <laughs> time of 229.17, Nelson, B.C., three and
first place for the time of 2 12 36 South Spokane VC Karen Best. Seventeen minutes ahead of the of tree in second place. It's very fast. And not long behind the net. No. For two twelve thirty six would have been good enough for individual men's division thirty to thirty nine. 19 entrants in this uh, category. In third place, for the time, 210.47 from Langley, BC, Ken Mulder. Okay. Second place, one minute ahead, two nine forty seven from Nelson, BC, Mark Hornby. In first place, men's 30 to 39, and this uh, is today's blistering time, 2 hours, 4 minutes, 22 seconds, that's awesome. From Sparrow, BC, Mike Taylor. Individual women, 40 plus. In your first triathlon, 356.41 from Grand Forks, BC, Margot Dean. In second place, time of 325.19 from Moy Springs, Idaho, USA, Dan Flanagan. In first place, women's division 40 plus, time is 315.35 from Christina Lake, Penelope Moody. Individual men, 40 plus, there were seven entered this year. In third place, 
time of 2.32, four, from Nelson, B.C., John Snively. In second place, for the time of 226.31, from Nelson, BC, and one of our major sponsors for my volunteers, Con Diamond. <laughs> This is time first and not final, I hope, for Athlon. Oh. In first place, individual men's 40 plus. I wish I could do double this time and half that age. Time of 212, 28. From Roslyn, BC, 47 year old Rob Gray. Rob, did you make it back? No, Rob didn't make it back. Super time. Is there anyone here to take the medal? Thank you very much. Congratulations. How do you feel? And running was, oh, I feel fine. Yeah. You're going to do it again? I'm glad I don't have to work tonight. <laughs> Be horizontal? Yeah, I'd like to do it next year. We do, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Did you do anything different? Train any different? Or? Uh, no, I maybe uh, run a little bit more. How about uh, diet? Starting tomorrow. <laughs> no diet's the same. Just keep your same. Chocolate raw for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of french fries. Yeah. Grace, you're out there. How did you feel out there? i uh, tired, especially in the run. I had side aches and oh, terrible in the run. But I, the last half of the run, I felt really um, comfortable and sort of got rid of my side ache and things went a lot better for me than the first half of the run. Lots of hills in that run. But the swim in the cycle, you felt strong in? Yeah, the swim, I had a, I had a fairly good swim. Usually I'm not in the lead in the swim. I usually can draft off people in the swim, but today I was narrowly in the lead in the swim. And I went out in the cycle, figuring I was in first place, but I saw all these kids in front of me. And I'm like, God, they're good swimmers nowadays. And I didn't realize they'd only swam half the distance. And so here I was thinking, oh, I'm way behind all these, all these young kids who are awesome swimmers nowadays. So I pushed harder than I thought I would on the cycle. And it turned out all right for me. I had, a, I had a, the fastest split on the bike today. So what, do you go around the province doing lots of triathlons? Or? Um, I go a little bit into the States to do triathlons and a little bit into Alberta because I live in Sparred which is close to um, the, the, the border and I go here and then I sometimes I go out to the Okanagan and do Kelowna or the Ironman or um, those races. So how does this course compare then? This is, this is a really good, I, I like the cycle course. I prefer a little longer swim because swim is one of my better events and the run was quite hard because it's so hilly. And the volunteers were super. I've never in, in my life seen so many police cars patrolling a course and the course so well marshaled. That's the best I've ever seen. And the volunteers along the bridge um, can cheer you on in both directions since the course goes out and back twice um, over the bridge. It really, really works well that way. Is this the first time you come to Nelson? Yes, it is, but I think I'll be returning. Because I really like this. Well, I guess when you win, I guess you like the race, but it's also a very nice race and the weather's nice. And I'd like them to have a longer swim, that's all. <laughs> well, maybe you'll get a chance to beat your time next year. Yeah, maybe. I'll have to train. I'm getting older, though, so I don't know. If I get the same time as next year and I'm older, then that sort of means I've improved. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good answer. Yeah. Well, thanks, Mike. Okay, thank you very much. All right, we'll see ya. Bye bye. Uh, I thought the race went really well. I, I felt pretty good up to the run. The run was the hard part for me. Uh, the bike and the swim was uh, good, but the run I found, uh, this is a tough run here. It's a real tough run.
How did your uh, times compare to previous years? Uh, this year my bike time was a lot better, and my swim time also. The, the run time was slightly better, but I wanted to break 40 for a 10K in this event, and that's... It's hard to do on this course because it's so hilly, but um, yeah, my next event will be the Ironman, and that's in two weeks, and uh, that's in Penticton, and I did that last year, and I'm hoping to improve my time also uh, this year in the Ironman, and that's what I've been keen my whole training for. What are the distances for Ironman? The Ironman, the swim is 2.4 miles, and the bike ride is 112 and then you do a 26 mile marathon after that. So it's quite a bit more, but it's done at a, a lower intensity. It's not as, I find these ones quite intense, quite hard to do because they're so short. More of a sprint. Well, this is good. And how did you place today? My placing was um, sixth overall. Sharon Best, congratulations on a stunning victory. You burned up the, the ladies' field. How did you feel? Thanks. I had a great race today. Everything went really well, really smooth. And I don't think you ever know that until you, <laughs> until you start it. We don't have the official time yet, but we figured 2 hours, 10, 2, 15. And I think you came 8th or 9th overall. That's, that's a pretty good show, showing. What do you attribute it to? Oh, I think my cycling part of it and, and maybe just being growing up in Nelson and, yeah. and doing this race every year. <laughs> you're from the South Spokane or you're from Nelson? From Nelson, but we live in South Spokane. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is your best event? My cycling. cycling. So how, did, how do you know where you were coming out of the lake going into the cycling? Do you have Gee, idea? I don't have an idea, yeah. you know, because of the teams going out at the same time. Yeah. It's pretty difficult to sort of know yeah. where you are. When in the race did you know that you Probably. Did, did you know that you had it wrapped up, like after the cycling? Did you have a feeling that I'm so far ahead of everybody? Yeah, I think even on the bridge, like halfway through the cycling portion, I felt really good. I felt really strong. I knew I was up with some of the top men coming out of um, Tag and area. So I knew that I was up <laughs> okay. fairly close. And uh, what is next? Is there any other triathlons in the Yeah, the Ironman coming up in Pentecton? August the 27th again. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, give it a, well, good luck to you. Go. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, of course, Sharon went on to finish third of all women in Dickton Ironman. And that's it for our triathlon. That's a wrap for Slice Walking Fun 89. Invite everybody back next year, August 12th, 8 o'clock, Sunday. Sunday, August 12th, 1990, Slice Walking Fun 90.